In part one in our discussion about the effects of rising interest rates on stocks, we talked about the concept of the risk-free rate of return. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'll link to that video in the top right-hand corner. Today, we're getting into the weeds. We're gonna be talking about the mechanics and concept of discount rates, which is really important in understanding why rising interest rates are generally negative for stock prices. Let's get into it. As someone who holds not only the CFP designation, but also an undergrad degree in finance, I've spent more time than most people would ever care for on the topic of the time value of money. But that's what we're really talking about today because it's directly relevant to this relationship between stock prices and interest rates. And don't worry, if you don't know anything about finance, I'm gonna to try to make this as simple and straightforward as possible. So the basic concept of the time value of money is money is more valuable today than in the future. So for example, if I offered you the choice of a million dollars today or in 25 years, you know what would you prefer? Well, I know there's probably some people watching this that would say, I'm not sure I'll be around in 25 years. And frankly, that's a good point because it demonstrates that money today is more valuable than money in the future, whether it's 25 years or whatever. Because obviously th those dollars could be used today, whether it's for your, or for your enjoyment or more relevant to our discussion here, that money could be invested and in earning a return. Now to illustrate this concept, let's think about a million dollars just 10 years in the future. And you can see that up in the tables here. We got a couple examples we're gonna look at. In finance, we have tools and calculations to help us determine what the present value of a dollar amount is. And generally speaking, the most important variable is the assumed interest rate, which is otherwise known as the discount rate in these calculations. Now to figure out the present value of something, we're gonna incorporate the concept we discussed back in part one, the risk-free rate of return. That means we're looking to the treasury market, and if you recall from part one, the 10-year US government bond is presently yielding about 1.8%. So, in other words, a present value calculation is meant to figure out how much money we would need today invested at a guaranteed rate to end up with some specified dollar amount in the future. So, if you're not following me, let's look up at the example. In our first example here, on the right hand side, what we're showing is the way the calculation works out. If we had a hundred or excuse me, eight hundred and thirty six thousand dollars, six eight thirty six six oh eight to be precise, and invested that in a ten year US government bond yielding one point eight percent, well the way the math works out, in ten years we would have our million dollars. So in, another way to state this is the present value of $1 million, given where interest rates are today, is about $836,000. Now, let's take a look at how the calculation changes when we change our assumed interest rate. Well, if you remember from part one, US government bonds or US treasuries, interest rates spiked in the early 1980s. In fact, they actually were briefly in excess of 15%. So let's just use that for example purposes. We'll say treasuries are in excess of 15% or, or specifically 15%. How does that change the present value of a million dollars today? Well, you can see it's a radical change. And obviously it's just because of the way the math works out. If you could earn 15% per year and you wanted to end up with a million dollars in 10 years, obviously you can start with a much smaller amount because the rate of return is so much higher. So how is this relevant to the relationship between interest rates and stocks? Well, businesses, theoretically at least, are ultimately worth the profits that they're gonna create for their owners. But of course, those profits are gonna be delivered over time. They're not gonna be delivered in just one year, as in our example up here. So one of the most fundamental methodologies for valuing a company is the so-called discounted cash flow model. And in lay terms, this simply translates into an analyst or an investor estimating out on an annual basis what they think a company is going to earn in net profits. 
and then discounting all of those profits back into a present value to kind of establish a baseline of what they think a company is ultimately worth. So finally, let's look at a couple of examples so you can really see the mechanics of rising interest rates and their effect on stocks at work. Now this might look a little, little intimidating, but let me focus your attention on the right hand side, this first example. So I'm gonna give you a little insight into what many Wall Street analysts do on a daily basis. So imagine you are an analyst or an investor and you're looking to make an investment in a business that's earning a million dollars in net profits. Now what you really need to do is try to make an assessment as to what that company is gonna earn in the future because ultimately that's the determining factor of what a business is worth, the, all, the profits it's gonna deliver over time. So let's just say in this example, you decided uh, you're gonna extrapolate out these net profits uh, the business, again, is earning a million dollars today. We think it's going to grow at 5% per year. So we're extrapolating these out. Now, to come up with some sense of what this business is worth, you're going to do the same thing we did back here. Remember, we discounted this million dollars backwards using an assumed rate of interest. Well, we're going to do the same thing here with these net profits. We're going to discount them back to a present value, and we're gonna use, use the risk-free rate of return or the 10-year yield, or the, excuse me, the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury just for illustration. Now, just to keep things simple here, we're gonna just discount these 10 years, and presently, the present value of this cash flow stream is about $11 million. Now, look, here's all you really need to know on the rest of the spreadsheet. These cash flows are exactly the same. All that's changing is I'm increasing the rate of interest or the discount rate, and look what happens to the present value. It goes down, and why is that? Well, it's because the future value of these profits is literally lower when interest rates are higher, again, due to that discounting effect. So in essence, as the future value of a company's profits goes down, well, so too does the present value of the business itself. And this represents or illustrates the actual mechanics of what happens when interest rates rise. Literally, any asset that produces cash over time, whether it's a business or even a piece of real estate, you could do the t same calculation, the value of it literally goes down because the future value of the profits also go down. Again, this is the mechanics of what happens when rates rise and you see big movements in the marketplace. All right, if you made it through that one and you have no background in finance, you deserve a pat on the back because we really got in the weeds today. Just to recap, we've been talking about how rising interest rates generally creates a lot of headwinds for stocks. And there's a lot of reasons, but we talked about the concept of the risk-free rate of return as the yield on things like government bonds goes up it makes riskier assets like stocks less appealing. So money tends to shift and that puts downward pressure on those riskier assets. And likewise, we talked about the mechanics of how rising interest rates literally makes the future, of val future value of money less, which means that also makes future business profits less valuable and therefore businesses themselves less valuable. So it's kind of a lot to follow, but those are the mechanics at work. So I hope all that made sense to you. If you liked the video today and you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything in here, feel free to drop me a comment. I always try to respond to those. So thanks so much for watching. I hope we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.